In the workshop, a walk or lathe, part two, making some necessary adjustments and showing some of the lubrication points. I'm also looking at the accessories that came with the lathe. I'm very pleased with the overall condition of this machine. As I showed in the previous episode, when I wind the saddle full length across the bed, there are no tight spots, it's very free and even all the way. At the moment I'm just running the lathe to make sure that everything works okay. I do notice that the nut at the right hand side of the lead screw that you can see revolving is not tight, so I need to look into this. The purposes of this nut on the end of the lead screw is to take up the end float, and at the moment there's quite a lot of end float. It is however very important not to over tighten this nut. That would not be a good idea at all, as it would put pressure on the lead screw and make it stiff to turn in the housing, which is not good for the rest of the lathe's transmission. I've removed the large nut to show the construction of the end of the lead screw. Once the nut is fitted in position by using a spanner and an allen key, you can lock it using the groove screw that fits in the end. I cannot stress how important it is not to put any pressure on the bearing in the block. All I'm doing is reducing the amount of end flow to the lead screw in the bearing. Using my trusty Barco spanner I hold the nut in the correct position and then tighten the grub screw to lock it in place using an allen key. After completing this small yet important job I lubricated the bearing using my Rylang pressure oil can on the lubrication point. There are quite a few lubrication points on this machine and they're very useful They keep the dirt out and let the oil in. As usual, I've put too much oil in so it's running down the front of the bearing but a wipe with the cloth fixes that. The fitting of the tailstock is very important. Originally it was quite loose. The general idea is you adjust the bolt to move the clamp as close as possible to the bed. Not like this. This is a rattle fit. It needs to be quite close, but not tight. It's trial and error. I'm using a box key to get it in the right position. This was too tight, so I backed it off a bit and tried again. Eventually I got the bolt in the right position. Although I must admit, it did take a few attempts to get it just right. Eventually the tailstock slid perfectly smoothly onto the bed. To lock the tailstock in position anywhere on the bed, I just use the locking bar. The cam tightens the part that you've just seen me adjusting hard up against the bed on the inside. There are a generous amount of oiling points on this machine. There are four on the saddle, that's the yellow bit, and two on the cross slide. In this clip you can see most of them, the only oiling point that you can't see in this clip is the one on the left hand side on the yellow part of the saddle. I really am impressed with quite a lot of aspects of this machine, the way it's made, although some of the edges are a bit rough, but you can't have everything. This would appear to be an imperial machine, oh dear, well good for me because I use imperial measurements. Note that on the saddle hand wheel it's graduated in two thou increments. I bought this lathe from a friend of mine and I also got some tooling and accessories with it. Here they are. In this food container box were various bits of lathe tools. Most of these will go into my other box of various bits of lathe tools because I never use them. Some of this tooling isn't worth bothering with such as this ground up boring tool that can go in the bin. This could be useful for the lathes in my other workshop. It's a carbide tip parting tool. And this is a spring loaded chuck key. I need to find the handle for it that's obviously come out of it. I found the handle in the bottom of the box and here's some Loctite 603 that I used to stick it back into the chuck key. I'm not going to use this spring loaded chuck key because I don't like them. All I have to do is to remember never to leave the chuck key in the chuck quite simple. I have used the spring loaded type of chuck key in the past but usually they spring out of the chuck when I'm using them fall on the floor hitting my foot in the process. There were some other quite useful tools a very handy size of screwdriver which is perfect for this workshop. 
There's also a box key and a cheap set of Allen keys. And if you look carefully, there's an Allen key being used as a Tommy bar on the box key, even though in the box is the proper Tommy bar for the box key. Also amongst the parts is this. In this yellow box is obviously a centre. And better still, it's a live centre. So I'll put that back in the box. I'm sure that this will come in very useful. This is an interesting tool. It's actually a hole punch. Quite useful for punching a hole in a thin piece of sheet metal. You just drill a hole the size of the bolt, reassemble the parts and then just tighten the bolt to cut the hole. With this lathe were also a set of lathe tools, a little bit beaten up and possibly not the best quality ones I've ever seen, but carbide tip lathe tools are always useful. That's it for this part of the collection, now to move on to the other box. This box contains the outer jaws for the chuck and change wheels, quite a few change wheels. And to be honest, I do need to alter the ratio of the change wheels because the traverse is a bit fast. In this box, I put the second tailstock chuck and the spring loaded chuck key, which now has its handle securely attached. This is a very well made box, I'm quite impressed with it. It opens and closes very smoothly, and the catches are spring loaded. It's very useful and what everyone needs in a workshop. Although I haven't shown most of it on camera, I've been running this lathe to make sure it works okay. And now I do notice that as it's warmed up, it's going faster. Look at the speed readout. Just over 3000 RPM, which is very useful for polishing things. This chuck key also came with the lathe. And also a fixed steady that clamps to the lathe bed for supporting long, thin pieces of work so that a long, thin shaft will not move away from the cutting tool when being turned. This is another type of steady. It's called a travelling steady because it travels up and down the bed. It needs to be bolted to the saddle. I've also bought an accessory via Amazon that I think is going to be really poor. It hasn't arrived yet, so when it arrives I'll make a video about it. Apart from the large amount of hours that I put in, both making and editing these videos, I often buy things to feature in the videos using my own money. I don't have any sponsorship. I can only make these videos provided I have Patreon supporters and I have noticed lately that quite a few of my Patreons have taken the free option. Please be aware if you decide to stop being a patron and join the new, and I don't know why they've done this, free membership option. I just don't see what the point of that is. I have noticed quite a few of my Patreons have opted out and instead of paying $1 to $5 a month on average, they've signed up to the free membership. I don't recommend doing this because on a daily basis, I check the free members and delete them and block them. To all my genuine Patreon supporters who help me out on a monthly basis, I really do appreciate it. I cannot make these videos without your help. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.